Today's episode is brought to you by the best store in the universe. Thousands of shirts, but not really. Shop now and support the show at MaddoxRules.com. Welcome to the best debate in the universe. Every debate in the universe from tortilla chips to orthopedic hips. With over 3 million downloads, I'm your host, Maddox. With me is the Deputy Cadet Moderator, Ron Babcock. Hey. And as always, the Junior Journalist, Taylor Nikolai. That is my name. Welcome back to the show. Guys, big episode 100 today. We've Whoa. done 100 episodes. Congratulations, right. Matt. You're welcome. Yes. I deserve Wrong. all accolades. All accolades. <laughs> and already our guest is piping up. Guys, I should introduce our guest this week. We've got an amazing guest. Oh, wow, that's very sweet. An amazing guest. He's a voiceover artist. He's a comedian. He does animation. Longtime animator. Yeah. Old school from Newground. Yeah, well, thank you. Please welcome Aaron from Game Grumps. Hey. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Aaron, to I, the show. I realized right when we started filming, I took a bite of a chip, and I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> and then the music started playing, and I was like... What do I do? What do I do? We've we've had guests before where they don't stop chewing all throughout, and I've had like very crackly snacks, uh, celery, things like that. Now, Aaron, your channel has blown up four point five million subs as of this recording, <laughs> oh, cool. right? Thanks. Might be like four point six or seven by I, the time this episode comes out. Yeah, I had no idea. I I haven't been keeping track in so, a long time. <laughs> I got to tell you, like uh, genuinely, we met at Comic Con like four or five years ago, wasn't it? It's so, longer so, than long, that. Yeah, maybe. That was like way before Game Ten games. years ago, maybe? Yeah, a yeah. long time ago. Because I haven't been to Comic-Con in, I would say, in five years. <laughs> hey, smart choice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's You're like, not wrong! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no guest has ever done that before. That's, cool. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, yeah, we met at Comic-Con, and uh, I'd kind of seen your career and trajectory just take off. I... To the point where I have guests who come over sometimes for parties and things like that, and I'll put on Game Grumps. I'll, we watched your Mad Dog McCree oh, yeah. takedown like two or three times I've seen. Really? So fucking fun. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's very sweet. I love Thank it you. so much because I say and think the same things when I'm playing those shitty old video games. <laughs> Especially Mad Dog McCree. For those who aren't familiar, Mad Dog McCree is a game that came out on Sega CD and Arcade. Yeah. And it's a really, really shit. It's like the bottom of the barrel for for full motion video video games. Yeah. Nothing is responsive. The story sucks. The characters suck. The, the game mechanics and design sucks. Yeah. Where you have to like re rewatch the same like death cut scene every single time you oh, die yeah. and then go back to the start menu. <laughs> it's such a piece of shit. Yeah, it's not a, not a good one. Yeah. You have the corner. The old man corner. Oh yeah! Every time you die, he, like he looks over your dead body and says the same shit, and yeah. it's just like, I don't want to watch this anymore. Looks this, dead to me. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this, this is so punishing. I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. Really shitty acting. Um, yeah. When I used to live by myself in Minnesota, I would watch your channel to make me feel less lonely. Wow. Hey, there it is. Oh my God, that's so that's so sweet. Taylor. That's a true story. Taylor's virtual. No, nobody doubts that. I <laughs> 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 Nobody doubts that yeah. you're sad living by yourself. Yeah, no, we actually do get that a lot. That like, it was, sometimes we call it like friendship surrogate because like, there's a lot of people like in the army or, or like that are just like in a transition period where they like move to a different state or something, and they're just like, I watch your show because I don't have any friends right now. Like, I just. I, I, I need to be kept company, and this is, yeah. makes me feel like I'm there with you guys. It's a way that people connect, and especially if you do a long form content like this podcast and, and you know your your Game Grumps episodes, people really get invested with the people they listen to because you become kind of associated with them. You follow their lives, you know what they're up to, you get their sense of humor, their cadence, and it's somebody that you get you come to listen to all the time. And we get that all the time too for this for just like the podcast. Yeah, a lot of people like giving Maddox notes. Uh, <laughs> which I'm a big fan of. What's the yeah. worst? What's the worst one? Oh, the most minor thing that I misspeak or if I mispronounce. One a couple episodes ago, it was uh, I believe it's actually instead of misspeak, it's actually misspoke. Oh, oh there it is. And and then I'll I mean, get I like just... ten voicemails about that. It's like, hey Maddox, you fucking idiot. And then they'll just tear into me one after another after another for these like minor things. Uh, what was it? A couple episodes ago, I said Illinois instead of Illinois. And <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just stupid. <laughs> We got this caller calling in, just blasting my ass. He goes, "Where do you go? Do you talk to your friends in Arkansas?" I'm like, I, I, "Point taken." You know, what I, mean? that's, I feel like that's like that's like the bad part of your audience's mo. I remember like back when you were just doing the best page in the universe, and like 
there was you got an email about when you said inane and they were like um it's insane and you were like <laughs> no inane's a fucking word dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll still get those. I still get those. Although it's like transitioned from email, direct email to, you know, shitty YouTube comments, shitty Facebook comments, mm-hmm. shitty Twitter comments, and shitty Instagram comments. Like everywhere they can be shitty to you, they will be. Right. Yeah, that's kind of how it's transitioned. And and it, it's not even as fun anymore. I don't – here's the thing. I don't respond – maybe you're the same way, Aaron. I don't really like to respond to people on – facebook that much anymore especially in in, like on public yeah because they'll come by and they'll do their little drive-by comment right saying something shitty to me and i can shut them down i can always shut them down because they're fucking morons and so i I do it right and i blast this guy's ass so hard inevitably what always happens is they delete their comment yeah and so there's no record of my brilliant retort (laughs) Nobody knows That's how you got to take a screenshot. Yeah. If they delete it, you're like, um, uh, excuse me, and then respond with the screenshot. Well, then if I take the screenshot and I post it, I'm a bully. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, why are you why are you bullying this guy? He deleted his comments. Yeah. Like, well, no one knows how fucking clever I was. I, I mean, I feel like there's a little gray area with your, because your brand is is all about, like, like tearing shit down. So, like, if you, you know, pe- people, people... I imagine you get more negativity in the comments because people want to incite a reaction out of you because it's always funny and clever. So, like some sometimes, sometimes, and then other times they're incorrigible blowhards <laughs> who are just the worst people. I don't know. It's pretty funny when you get riled up. <laughs> <laughs> I can always tell when you get riled up because you're like yeah. you repeat the first word of the sentence a couple times. Oh like, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then and that's how I know I'm like, oh, he's <laughs> <going> up now. <laughs> Ron, <laughs> like as soon as like the the thoughts are coming out of your head faster than your mouth can process them, yeah, yeah, you know, I get these anger sweats. <laughs> uh, so, so Aaron, also I should mention you did a voice for Rick and Morty. Yes, yeah, that's amazing. Oh, what which was, one do you do, Rick yeah. or Morty? I got, <laughs> well, um, it was just a it was just a guest thing. Like I, I've I've known Justin. I mean, not super a long time, but before Rick and Morty. Cool. And he was just always kind of like, oh, yeah, I'd love to get you on the show sometime. And eventually that just happened. It was just a, it was like I was a photographer on the, it was the season two finale. It was like a wedding photographer. Um, and he's like, I'm not staring at you. I'm taking a picture. Cause like he's a cyborg and he's taking a picture with his eyes. Um, oh. And then at the very end, when Rick is, spoilers, when Rick is in the, the, the cell, there's like a criminal next to him, and he's like, "What are you in for?" That was me too. So okay, oh, that's that's really cool. That's neat. And then you, we also have something in common. We are friends with the Side Night and Happiness guys, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I love those guys. Yeah, me too. We're really good buddy, buddies with them. In fact, the first time they exhibited at Comic Con, we split my booth. And oh, dope. How, yeah, that's how they got their foot in the door. I think, uh, that's I always fun, man. Yeah, those guys are amazing. It's like a big they're, hangout sesh. They've blown up. If you guys haven't checked out Side Night and Happiness, if you guys, if the words Cyanide and Happiness don't ring a bell, I'm sure you've seen their comics. Because I'll always say Cyanide and Happiness, and people are like, what? No, I never heard of them. I'm like, explode them? They're like, nope. And then I show them the stick figure comics. It's uh, the red, excuse me, the, the green and the orange stick yeah, figure yeah. comics. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, I've seen those everywhere. Yeah, they're they're a victim to a lot of people stealing their content. And Absolutely, like, yeah. on Reddit. They have the joking hazard game that came out huge yeah. huge uh, kickstarter mm-hmm. like over a million dollars they did amazing but yeah we're i'm friends with those guys and we i've done like you know guest voices and stuff for yeah them. those just dudes are hilarious i yeah. fucking love those guys They're fantastic dudes uh well guys we should talk about what we're going to be debating this week okay which is is italian food all the same shit that's <laughs> that's the debate we're having I feel like the, already that is a loaded question why what's loaded about it i feel like your is Italian food all the same shit? The answer to that question is is a yes. For yeah, me. it is definitely worded from the perspective of <laughs> hey, that fuck it is. It. Do you think it's stupid or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it is all the same shit, it's just loaded with tomatoes, mozzarella, and some fucking type of bread, something or other. But anyway, I don't want to lead, put the cart before the horse. Yeah, I, you know, I, we haven't. Yeah, let's not put the. <laughs> Let's not put the breadsticks before the marinara. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, before we begin, though, I want to hear everyone's buzzer so that we know who's buzzing in. Aaron, as our guest this week, go ahead and uh, let's hear your buzzer. Wrong! And Ron? <laughs> and here's mine. <laughs> if you hear a buzzer from anyone during this debate, that means someone's chiming in with a correction and interruption. Uh, they just want to be a, an asshole. But, Aaron, as our guest this week, I'm going to give you first stab at the debate. Is Italian food all the same shit? Is Italian food all the same shit? Yeah. Uh, hey, man. I mean, Olive Garden's got like a five-page menu, so I feel like 
maybe there's a little variety going on. Oh yeah, I mean I, it's, it's a categorical, right? Like you got the pasta, and then you got like the little chicken piccata. There's no pasta there. It's chicken and sauce and peas or whatever the fuck. And then and then you got what's what's another Italian food? Uh, yeah, it's soup, hard to think of pasta. Pasta, <laughs> yeah, soup, soup. There you go. Yeah, that one with all the uh, with the beans. The one with the pasta in it. Minestrone. <laughs> Is that Italian? That was that cold soup. No, yeah. Gestapo. Ga- no, 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 that's, that's no, Russian. Because that, Gestapo. <laughs> Gestapo is uh, Hitler's secret police. <laughs> but Wait, a, I gotta admit, the soup's not bad. Italian wedding soup? What is, that's just like meatballs and soup, right? Like, yeah, it's meatballs yeah. and soup, and then they have those little, like, cous- it's basically couscous that they put in there, right? Italian wedding soup? Oh, does it have pasta in it? It has some kind of pasta. Yeah, wow. We're, I'm sensing a theme with Italian food. It's got some kind of fucking sauce and some kind of fucking pasta. Everything is the fucking same with Italian food. And especially, especially, and everyone's gonna fucking, oh, Maddox, uh, pizza. Pizza's the one. And like, oh, yeah, pizza. yeah, I always love having pasta on my pizza. Yeah. It's the same shit. It's just bread. It's bread, <laughs> tomatoes, and cheese. Hey, same fucking uh, thing. Fuckhead, everything is bread, okay? All Asian <laughs> food is what? The base is rice. All Mexican food, it's all tortilla. It's all some form of bread. We're all made of bread. Wrong. We're all made of chicken. Chicken is everything. Is It's like the universal thing. And by the way, I don't think Neapolitan style... Italian food counts as anything. It's not what you said. Chicken piccata, Aaron. What the fuck is Neapolitan style? That's like, uh, yeah, it's like real fancy. When Italian, it's like if you if you have a date you want to impress. You have no yeah, idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, Neapolitan wait, style. Wait, wait. Is that an ice cream? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're thinking of. Uh, yeah. No, he's thinking of the correct thing. <laughs> Neapolitan what ice cream. I, well, I don't know what you're thinking. thinking of. That's what I'm always trying to figure out. <laughs> Wait, so continue with your thought. When you have a fancy date and you want to impress her, you get Neapolitan Italian food. Shit, what am I thinking of? It's not Neapolitan. It's I have no cream. idea. That, that's the like chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's that. The one that I always hated, and you'd get one of them, and then you'd leave the others. You know, it's Wait, the thin... Which one are you leaving? What I, I'm, like I'm, a, I'm I'm such a basic bitch. I like vanilla and like I don't like chocolate ice cream. <laughs> yes. I don't like strawberry. Uh, ice cream. Yeah, no, none of these exotic flavors for me, sir. No, Neopoli- no. Uh, Neapolitan. How do you pronounce Neapolitan. it? Yeah, Neapolitan pizza is a style of pizza made with tomatoes and mozzarella cheese. That's right. Fuck faces. I was right. You're wrong. Isn't that all pizza? You didn't well, say Neapolitan. You I went Neapolitan. Ne- I said Neapolitan. <laughs> I also like the way you you pronounce couscous. C- couscous. Yeah, there's something couscous. nice. Yeah, you have such a couscous. nice like. It's you, an authenticity. Nice little yeah. flavor on. Yeah, it. it's a little Mediterranean authenticity. Yeah, a little marinara. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you impress a girl? You take her out for uh, a fancy pizza? If you don't like her, you take her to Olive Garden. If you want to impress the girl, oh, then you take her to a Neapolitan <laughs> <laughs> ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> Choose any flavor, baby, of the three. Uh, vanilla's what? mine. I, look, look. <laughs> people, people love to shit on Olive Garden. Like, I've noticed, I- I've asked a lot of girls out to Olive Garden, and every single one of them will come back to me of like, that's not real Italian food. And I'm like, I'm asking you on a date. Just say yes or no. And they always say no. Bully? <laughs> Do you think they would have gone out with you if it wasn't Olive Garden? No. Aww. No. I, Olive Garden is not, it's like, it's not the deal maker, it's the deal breaker. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Olive Garden is basically just like, hey, well, how do you want your salt? Yeah. Do you want it soup form or do you want it in pasta form? Also, I go there for lunch sometime because this kid I work with who just fucking loves Olive Garden. He's all about Olive Garden. And we go there for the lunch special. Kind of chintzy on the on the pasta serving. That's oh, my shit. big beef with Italian restaurants. Yeah. We went we went to uh my lady and I went to a fancy Italian restaurant last week. It was one of those uh, Neapolitan places, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> was it Neapolitan? No, we got a yeah, yeah. And we got we got a I got she got vegetable lasagna. Right, yeah, and I got the um, spaghetti uh, 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 fettuccine bolognese because uh, I always like to get the bolognese. Yeah, bolognese, bolognese. Yeah. And uh, here's the thing, though, it comes. It was delicious. It was very, very good. Of course it is. And you know what was weird delicious. is that her lasagna was different than my bolognese. Oh, the, oh they mean, were they were different. They, oh, right. It was almost like they weren't the same thing. It's the yeah. same fucking thing. So what? But the pasta, like they give you like an amount that is just not. It's fucking pasta. Well, so if I'm forking over eighteen bucks, I want a trough <laughs> of pasta. Yeah. You can only give me you can give me the same amount of sauce. That's fine, but give me more pasta. Yeah. Well, supposedly that's. I mean, I've never been to Italy yet, but um, supposedly that's if you get pasta in Italy, like they don't. 
it's it's a very small serving like it's almost like an appetizer like a lunch thing instead of like like i'm gonna fucking gorge on pasta you know what was good though is afterwards actually felt like perfect like i wasn't too exactly fat. right because we had a little bit but here's my other uh, pet peeve with italian places so they bring out the dessert menu and we're like yeah let's get some uh let's get some gelato you know mm-hmm. let's go full full on and so we get the gelato it's delicious and then we get the bill and like for these little cups of gelato it was 10 bucks yeah for each one. That's how they get you. And I would have preferred <laughs> that to have known that before, because then we could have just shared one ten dollars for each small cup of ice cream. Mm. Delicious, fine. But why do why do they not put the prices on the dessert menu? Like, why is that like all of a sudden like, yeah, we don't. Well, you're being held hostage now mm-hmm. at this point. Because everything sounds good at that point. Everyone like, creme wants brulee. To. I think tiramisu is overrated. I'll go there. Tiramisu is not overrated. You <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> of course you would like tiramisu. It's like just eating fucking... To me, it just tastes like coffee yeah. grounds. It's, you are such a tiramisu person. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. I'm a tiramisu purist. I don't know what to tell you guys. It's just soft and like wet. If it's done... Okay, if it's wet, you're eating bad tiramisu. Oh, it shit. shouldn't be so fucking wet that it feels like a sponge in your mouth. That's barf. It does. It, it. Feels, it, it feels like you're eating like a, 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 a chocolate-influenced sponge. No, that you're doing it wrong. That's shitty tiramisu, my friend. You want good tiramisu? Well, it should go have to one like of those a... fancy Neapolitan. So, so the Neapolitan restaurant, right? The Neapolitan uh, style, ne- yeah. Neapolitanary. What, what was Aaron? You said the the chicken thing, the chicken caprese, what, what chicken piccata, piccata, piccata. Yeah. piccata. What the fuck is that? You said you said it has peas on it. Those aren't peas. It's capers. Capers, whatever. <laughs> I don't fucking capers, and they whatever. suck, right? Capers suck. Yeah, don't they? Yeah, they're a little, they're a little too salty. They throw it all what there to be fun. What's wrong with you people? Yeah. Capers are great. I'm capers. not a huge caper fan. Capers, I get it. Yeah, I get it too. I, I I'll have like one. Capers ever, have these and I'm wonderful done. like burst of salt flavor oh. that you can use on a different fish dishes that lend itself wonderfully. You know what to it's the like? Palate. It's it, it's like if they put you like hops. things burst in your mouth. <laughs> if it's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> nice, Taylor. If, <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you put hops, like if if they put hops in beer, like actual hops, so you could chew them. It's just that really strong. It's like a fruit gusher, but with salt. Yeah, it's a salt gusher. Bar. Oh wow. Oh, this and this a guy doesn't like tiramisu. Gusher. Yeah, <laughs> the same guy who's like it's a dinner gusher. Yeah, because <laughs> it's concentrated. Where Olive Garden is just salt. Oh okay. Listen, uh, uh, Italian food is not all the same. There are differences. Okay. Okay. okay you're, you're, first of all, you're coming on hot. You're like, it's all marinara. What's the most? It's all marinara what's cheese. The, what's the Have most? Have you heard of pesto? Oh, shit. It's got you there. Pine nuts and basil and olive oil? Kind of different than marinara. Sounds like it's stolen. Kind of different. Sounds like it's stolen from another culture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the number one. And then the number one export of Italy, Italians, is cultural theft. Uh, every- oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All they do is fucking spaghetti. First of all, pasta, the the staple of Italians. It's from China, isn't it? It's from China. Yeah. Everything's from China, though, right? Is it money? Yeah. Currency? The shirt. Yeah. Shirt's yeah. made in China. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say, though, Aaron? You, you were saying that Itali- not all Italian food is the same. Oh, I was just curious what you think the most... See, so your argument is that it's not all the same. So I what's, so what's the most different Italian dish from what, I guess, uh, someone like Maddox would say is of a similar category right, i think there is a uh let me think okay <laughs> got it gnocchi gnocchi sucks Fuck i hate you gnocchi. oh my god <laughs> how do you like tiramisu so and you hate gnocchi it's the basic the same oh, consistency god. aaron where do you fall on the gnocchi scale Nookie's pretty good. Sucks. It's stupid it's a stupid <laughs> word it's a shit word i can't believe you like would bite into like gnocchi and just be like this sucks well here's and, like, the, throw here's your the, t- what, what so it's like Pounded potatoes? What is? They're like little potato yeah. balls. Okay, uh, they have yeah. a real thick consistency. Usually, they're you know mixed with marinara or dare I say pesto. Mm. Pesto, yeah. Two Stolen. different flavor profiles. Alfredo. Mm. Alfredo. Oh wow, what is it? Oh, cream I and will, garlic. I do think some. I I think Mexican food is pretty much all the same. Yeah, I, I think wrong. that statement is so much more valid for Mexican. Food I, than I think for so Italian. too. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> what? Oh man, what does this Mexican more, more. dish have? Let me guess. Tortillas? Yeah. No. Rice? No. Beans? Che- no. Cheese, kind of cheese meat, no. beans, and tortilla. Holy shit. Yeah. No, because you basic bitch, uh, you basic bitch Epicureans have never had Oaxacan Mexican food. Which I had has mole nothing. last night. Did you had mole last night? Last night, yeah, we actually yeah. did. It was I, excellent. Dude, I will say Langua is fucking delicious. Langua is yeah. fucking delicious. Langua's, yeah. Honestly, Correct. not many people are getting into Langua. I'm like, you got to get into yeah. it. I am get downtown with Langua. Yeah, I, I had a uh, <laughs> I had an experience. I went to a Korean barbecue place, and I ordered the tongue, Langua's tongue. And uh, this person hadn't tried it before. And uh, we were hyping her up, and we're like, yeah, come on. It's, it just tastes like it's regular meat. Just eat it. 
And just as she was about to put it in her mouth, I'm like, hey, that's the only cut of meat that tastes you back. And she goes, no, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> like, people in this country are so weird about eating like uh, cabeza, like head, lingua, tongue, or like insects. Like the U.S. or the North America or U.S. and Canada and Europe is really weird about eating insects. The rest of the world loves insects. You ever have um, those uh, grasshoppers? Yes. From God, from, also from Oaxaca. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little garlic salt on them. I love yeah, I love, yeah. love grass. You know, a lot of times people put them on like little tacos or I put them on a pizza, which is different than pasta. Oh, it's shit. the same fucking food, It's Ron. so not the same. If you sit down pizza, right? Yeah. And then you sit down, oh, here's the spaghetti. And you're like, here you go, guys. I got. I, it's the same thing. Oh, what if you ordered out pizza with friends and, and fucking spaghetti showed up? And be like, I thought we ordered pizza. And Maddox is there going, oh, it's the same thing, guys. It's oh, the same thing. Oh, shit. This is why people don't want to <laughs> hang out at your pizza party. That was a fucking pile driver right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have this dough, all right? <laughs> Yeah, like at what point does the breakdown because like, like at what point do you do you put that? It's like we're all carbon based life forms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are we all the same? Basically, I wrote in in my book "Fuck Whales." I know it sounds like a plug, but the last chapter is "Fuck You," and and I talk about how every culture has one thing in common, which is chicken and rice. Mm -hmm. Every culture has a chicken and rice dish. I remember the first time I tried Cuban food. I was I, I I tried it in Los Angeles, and I'm like so excited. I'm like holy shit. I went back home to Utah, and I told my friends, I'm like. Yo, I tried Cuban food. They're like, "Fuck, what's that like?" I'm like, "Well, it's, uh, they got this chicken and they then do something um, different with chicken. Some rice." Yeah, I always trust the thing. I always trust Cubans with chicken. It's they. It's good chicken. They know that they know how to do chicken way better. We overcook with chicken rojo, with the rojo sauce. Yeah. Oh my god, the it's red fantastic. sauce is great. I mean, yeah, but like chicken in the states, we overcook it like crazy. Yeah. We always cook chicken way too much. Oh well, yeah, because everyone's scared about dry. the salmonella. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so Aaron, uh, I, I would say that uh, chicken and rice is the same thing. But you, you, you know those play doh play factories where you put the dough through, and it like it's different. Like there's a star shaped one. Yeah, yeah. So, pasta is the same thing. It's like, oh, now I got this like fucking pasta shaped one. Oh, you don't want pasta? Then I'll make it flat like a pizza. It's the same fucking. Thing. You're just putting through a play doh, play doh. Uh, yeah, like the same. The same every shape of pasta uh -huh. is just a play doh fucking thing for adults. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> right. Hey, whoops, there we go. That's fun and, and delicious. It's fun <laughs> and delicious for that one dish. Yeah, I love making noodles. I make ramen I, I, all the time. I like, you make ramen? Yeah. People were so excited for the 100th episode. They were like, <laughs> something big's going to happen. Everyone just agrees with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, on the 100th episode, we're talking about making pasta. Yeah. And, and Wait, just the response is, that's great a great podcast. idea. Yeah. So wait, you make Pretty your own fantastic. pasta? Yeah, yeah. So oh, walk us through that a little Here bit. Here we go. <laughs> Ron. I mean, hey guys, it's the hundredth episode. Let's get into this. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Ron so, what, what what point are you trying to make so that I can sort of charge my argue, my my description? Of I went it to a, yours? I went I once went to a pasta making class and I've never felt so alive. Oh yeah. It was. I mean, it was like it, it was like almost a scene from the movie of my life. If that title of that movie was like <laughs> how Ron got his groove back. Yeah. <laughs> like I, there, it was something so satisfying about it. But what kind of pasta are you making? You know, what's your, what's your go to? Yeah. What's a hard? What's an easy one? What's a hard one? Do you think all pasta is the same? No, some of them have egg. Oh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of pasta to make? Uh, I mean, ramen noodles. Those are just the, it's so easy. It's just water and, well, it's alkaline water and flour and that's it. Why? And then do you like put it through a pasta machine or you chop it up? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can hand cut it, yeah, but um, I usually put it through a pasta machine because hand cutting it is a little, I'm not super good with a knife. That's when you got that YouTube money, man. Yeah. Get yeah. yourself a pasta machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like ten dollars. She's crazy, Shit, man. <laughs> you don't gotta brag to us. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually got it for like my birthday. Like my parents were like, "Oh, who'd you? Oh, make wow, you got presents on your birthday. Must be nice." <laughs> yeah, damn. Yeah. yeah, parents. You don't gotta uh, come and rub it in. Oh, you yeah. remember your birthday? Wow. Yeah. So, uh, oh, and that reminds me, Aaron, you have this uh, YouTube Red series that just launched, right? Or yeah, wow. not, not too long ago, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. YouTube Red? YouTube Interesting. Red. Oh my God. YouTube That's Red. literally what my phone, because I do, because I'm driving a lot, and I'm like, so I do the voice to text all the time, and every time I say YouTube Red, it's just, it comes out as YouTube Red. <laughs> just the band U2 and then Bread. And, and I never correct it. I'm just like, nah, here we go. Man, yeah. Let them figure it out. About. Yeah, yeah, I got that. That's yeah, that's, that's super cool. I was watching uh, the, one of the episodes. It's free right now. 
uh, uh, the first promotion? episodes for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have this uh, this Indian kid in there. Pa- yeah. Patel. What's his name? Pat- uh, in the in the show, his name's Kamal. Kamal. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But in in real life, his name's Rahul. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, is he actually? Is he like? A, he looks like he's like a 16, 17 year old kid. He, is he? He was fifteen, I think, when we filmed that. Shit, is that a pain in the ass to shoot with uh, with anyone underage? Uh, like like w- I'm talking like uh, with the unions and things union like that. rules and stuff. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't remember ever having to like butt up against it. Really, I think I think those days were it was a pretty tight crew. So I, I think if those days. We're, we're scheduled around that a little mm. bit. So, like, when we went on break, it was, like, supposed to be his break. Or, like, I, I don't know how it works. I, I worked on a movie once where there was someone under 18, and they had to take, like, an hour break a day to have him go get tutored. Like, yeah. he took, like, math class for an hour a day. Yeah. Like, oh, it was wow. really weird. And, and no one could go near him. Like, yeah. it, they, they had to shut the door, like, pull down the curtains. I, to this day, I still don't believe he was doing math homework. Of course fucking not. They're not ever doing homework. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb. Had during math. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Let's take let's take a break from your fun job to do homework. Are you kidding me? I did a thing for uh, I, I did like a trailer for my my uh, book the uh, the the children's one. I am better than your kids or crappy children's artwork. And and I worked with these kids and it was such a pain in the ass. The kids were great, but uh, it was such a pain in the ass because you had to constantly take breaks and you had to feed them. And, yeah. Oh, guess what? The fucking kids want to eat fucking cheese pizza. <sighs> it's the same as any other pasta dish. You it's know? the exact same. Yeah. Okay. Might as well just get them a plate of spaghetti and the fucking same thing. If you if you go to a buffet, have you ever been to an Italian buffet, Aaron? Italian buffet? Yeah. No. Doesn't exist because it's all the same thing. <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> Man, you just fucking backed me into a corner and yeah. fucking shot me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Because nobody is ever going to pick up a slice of pizza and pasta because they're like, well, it's the same ingredients. One's just kind of silly. You know, he's like, oh, it's a, it's a pasta. That's why I tell you. I think it's just because they're heavy as fuck. That was something I wanted to mention when you first, because you were like, well, you bring a girl out on a first date to an Italian restaurant. I'm like, I would never bring a girl out on a first date at an Italian <laughs> restaurant because the heaviest fucking food, yeah. your breath is always going to smell like garlic. Yep. Like, there's no positive. Like if it's like if it's going really well and then you like get some food in you and then afterwards it's like oh yeah you know we should mess around it's like I don't know I kind of <laughs> kind of have yeah. to take a dump in like thirty minutes like, uh, I kind of have to take a dump yeah, but I kind of uh, still can't take it because all the cheese <laughs> yeah you just sit there for a while and like oh, I guess I just had yeah. a pee do you have a spare toothbrush at your apartment can I, yeah, that I can uh, use barf it's the worst would you like me to wa- watch me eat bread that I dip in olive oil yeah uh, you know, know what bothers me is when you go to a Chinese buffet and then there's like pizza there. That has always bothered me. Oh, yeah. It, it, like, the people that you bring that uh, take one of the pieces of pizza, like, w- what's yeah. wrong with those people? It's well, also you, like after you have all this, the random sushi that they have there, mm-hmm. it's like, hey, you guys want to top this all off with some frozen yogurt? Yeah. <laughs> and you're just yeah. like, good Lord, what are we doing with our life? Well, you know, according according to Maddox, that um, the pizza is uh, the same thing as noodles, which came from China, so. Yeah. How, yeah, you like eating bit. fireworks. I don't know. I have this friend who's uh, a quote Italian. I'm doing the hand quotes for those of you watching on YouTube. He's quote Italian. And he would throw the biggest fucking fit if we ever went to Olive Garden. And me and his wife would conspire against him. Like, she would secretly pull me aside. It's like, hey, man, you want to you wanna see him have a bad day? Let's go to Olive Garden. And I'm like, okay, I'll, pr- I'll pitch it. And then she goes, yeah, I'll back you up. I'm like, great. And I'm like, hey, how about uh, Olive Garden? And he's just like, you can see it, the, his, the energy in his face sink, and he gets pissed off. His eyes like roll back into his head, and he's about to do a rant about how it's not real Italiano. All right, and- fine. We'll go to Buca de Bapo. Oh, man. <laughs> so this guy, I'm like, first of all, fuckface, you don't, you don't speak Italian. You've never been to Italy. Nothing about you is Italian except your last name. So fucking drop the act, and let's go get some Hospitaliano at the Yellow <laughs> Garden. <laughs> That's what, that's what I don't get that argument too. It's like it's not real Italian food. It's like you can just say it's gross. Yeah. Like I don't, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's gross. It's a little gross. Like they microwave everything. None of the it's, food we have here that's on a large scale, I think, would is like you know, Taco Bell is an authentic Mexican yeah. food. <laughs> you know, it's like it's all kind of been yeah. like you, gringo eyes. Like Chipotle isn't like oh a real. I think Chipotle is gross. I'll say that. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. Get, yeah. Whoa. Fired Whoa. Up. Whoa. I think Chipotle Whoa. is super gross. Oh yeah. Damn. I'm yeah. Outside. Yeah. Hey, do you want your stomach to hurt? Chipotle. <laughs> 
every time. I don't know what it is. And also, oh. they're like tortilla wrap is like the tortilla wrap alone is like seven hundred calories. No, it's more than that. Which is like yeah. it's a, like so just one burrito. Like, listen, I like having like crazy food for, it, but like when one meal is like your daily allotment of calories, I like yeah. that shit's just. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I, I every time. It's Chipotle, like on a set or something. If they're doing so catering, fucking bummed. Yeah, me too. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll try to order the healthiest thing here. It's oh, it's what's that? Another 800 calories? Okay, it's like barbacoa on salad. Yeah, yeah. it's like, and I'll, and I'll get it. And there's like that trough of oil water at the bottom at the end, which I still drink. <laughs> <laughs> which is delicious, by the it's way. So good. Well, it's just like when you eat Chipotle. Like I have people trying to like. We're in Los Angeles, so I get it. If you're in this an area and you don't like, and I'll go on tour and people will try and get me to eat at their like Mexican place, and I'm like, it's never fucking good and yeah. though they were like they think like dude these burritos are bomb and i'll try them and i'm like i just wasted eight bucks but like chipotle it's just you you f- taste each individual ingredient yes. you're like oh that was a good mouthful of just rice yes. and a little bit of chicken yes that and is it, my, go ahead it, they're just the flavors are so separate it's it's a segregated burrito yes that's it whoa it's like south Jeez. africa that's early my- 90s burrito <laughs> yeah that is my that is my least favorite thing about Chipotle too, and because they they put it on in like these rows, yeah, and then they just wrap it up, yep. and so every time I get a burrito from them, um, I feel like such a douche because they always react with this like ugh mentality. When I'm like, can you just like mix it up a little before you wrap? You it? know who does that? Who Illegal Pete's in Denver, Colorado. Oh. And that's their they're like a kind of a, a chain local chain, and their whole thing is they mix it up before they wrap it up. I gotta tell you, it, it improves the burrito. Illegal Pete's big plug. You know, I'm gonna cut it from this episode until they pay me. But uh, what? <laughs> no, it's just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> big plug. Uh, they're definitely gonna not pay you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you see that uh, comic, Aaron, a while back, where someone made a comic about? Um, someone made like the worst Chipotle burrito where they put everything in layers vertically. And so, (laughs) (laughs) so he's like explaining this, like to, like as a, a, as a human to an alien, it's like, why would anyone ever want like three bites of just sour cream before they get to the rice? You fucking idiot. Have you never had a burrito before in your life? They just put it (laughs) <laughs> like little rose, oh man! It's it went super viral. Like, yeah, wow. is that like the tessellated cheese Subway like part yeah. article that actually like made it to Subway and now it's in their their handbook? Yeah, I which I saw your guys' uh video, the animated clip about going to Subway. Oh my what god! It, yeah. What, yeah, what are your thoughts on Subway? <laughs> First of all, to me, <clears throat> tastes all the fucking same. Right, doesn't matter what you get. It has that same Subway. Kind of taste. Are you trying to? Are you trying to deflate this Italian argument oh, with that, Ron? No. Oh shit! Because I don't like. I don't like the way. You, I don't like the way. You said I that. saw your finger go to the button, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh man, he's gonna ding!" And yeah. you did not ding no. that. First not of all, all, like I, I just don't trust people who are like really into Subway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if yeah. you're if Subway, you're if you're like hey, Subway's pretty good. It's like I don't know, man. I gotta say, like Subway's the number one place. That exemplifies that like a sa- a scandal can ruin your brand because literally every time I walk into a subway, I'm just like, Jared wanted to diddle kids. Like that's, <laughs> that's like my first. How's thought. your sandwich taste? Huh? Yeah. How's it taste? Like yeah, I'll have flatbread. Fuck, Jared wanted to diddle kids. Like, it was, <laughs> and it's just a nonstop that, thought. And the fact that they knew about it and they're like. Well, yeah, but you guys are trying money. so hard to never get sponsored by a couple different companies right now. I would <laughs> well, Stinky Pete's in uh, Colorado. <laughs> they're, they're what's wow, hey, they don't in, fuck kids. Incorrigible Peters <laughs> down in down in Nebraska. Where what, what is it? What, what was it called? Colorado. Deep Pete's. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, illegal Pete's. Pete's. Illegal Pete's. <laughs> Illegal Pete's. It's a burrito place called Illegal Pete's. I don't know. Not gonna get sponsored Maybe. by anyone. Just carpet bombed it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. The Jared thing. Wait. First of all, who said it just a second ago? The Subway knew about that shit. They knew about yeah. that shit. Really? Uh, in an article from USA Today, 2015, Subway execs knew about Jared Fogle's interest in children. Oh snap! Holy so that's just shit. fact. That, so yeah, this is even, just there's, no there's claims here. done. I'm just saying that this has been talked about. <laughs> Oh, I gotta say though, with with Subway, like I I think it's disgusting. First of all, <laughs> and yeah, I don't think the sandwiches are very good. No, either. not at all. They just they're sitting out in warm tubs. Mm. But uh, I just recently started like watching more what I eat and like counting calories and all that stuff because I'm trying to lose weight. And I walked into a Subway because my wife really wanted had a craving for Subway, and I was like, these sandwiches are really good calorically. Like, I, I, I think I'm probably going to be coming to Subway more. Maybe just I to... could eat fresh a little. <laughs> yeah. I'm like a six-inch sweet onion chicken teriyaki is like 420 calories or something. And I'm like, fuck, I could live off this shit. I mean, I'll probably vomit a couple times, but like, 
I mean, it's not that bad. I, there's a guy in my office who really eats. Like, one guy eat, just loves to eat Olive Garden. The other guy eats at Subway every single day, mm. like to the point where they know him, and they like hook him up with like free cookies and chips and oh, shit because he's like hook one of their up. best customers. <laughs> The franchise owner. And I'm just like, you know, there are other things out there besides Subway. That's the thing is like, I just feel like there are other places you can go to. Like, if you want variety, you go to like a really great Italian restaurant, you know? No, you, you don't. Get, That's the You can get pizza, <laughs> you can get pasta, or you can okay. get pizza. I'm going to tell, tell you. Or pasta. I'm going to tell you three different, four different Italian foods by name that are different, but they're the exact same fucking food. Lasagna, okay? Uh-huh. It's got pasta, sauce. It's pasta cake. And cheese. Okay, Not pasta cake fine. Fan. Yeah, lasagna is like whatever. Yeah. And then you got pasta, the regular pasta with marinara sauce. Okay, so you got pasta, cheese, and sauce. Or pesto. And then you got yeah, or, or meatballs. Yeah, pesto's not a. It's a stolen. It's a Mediterranean thing. Please, pine nuts. Pine nuts are Mediterranean. It's a Mediterranean yeah, thing. Yeah, and Italy is on the Mediterranean. Not barely. <laughs> um, <laughs> Barely, as in yes, it is. Literally a boot that's stuck in it. <laughs> okay, then you got a calzone. Okay, it's pasta, which is just bread. Same fucking thing. And then sauce, and then cheese, and then you got pizza, pasta, sauce, cheese, and then what else? What else did I cover it all? Did I cover the entire gamut of Italian okay, so food? What, Ravioli, what pasta, food, sauce, cheese. So what food is uh is equal to be uh, diverse enough for you. Chinese is the most diverse food I, be, I think I've ever had. Or Vietnamese. Probably Chinese. because it covers like a third of the whole world. Yeah. They fucking figured it out. Why can't Italy? <laughs> because can't, it's a lot smaller. <laughs> why can't Italy have one fuck? And I've been to Italy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I went to Rome and I had all well, the best pizzas and they had Neapolitan style pizzas with the egg in the middle and everything, you know, really thin. You know that really pizza thin. that's covered in ice cream? Yeah. So ne- good. Oh, man. Neapolitan style. Melts right down. <laughs> Neapolitan style pizza. If you guys ever come out to Los Angeles, there's a there's a pizza place I highly recommend called 800 Degrees. Have you had it, Aaron? I've seen it around. It's pretty 800? good. 800? Yeah, it's pretty good. So you kind it's of like, like- fast food pizza. You walk in and you kind of tell them what they want. They kind yeah. of make- You ask for it's the pasta one, right? and they make you a pizza. The, yeah. Like, they go, it's the same shit. Yeah. And they shove a meatball <laughs> in your mouth and they tell you to get out of there. <laughs> How would you prefer your pasta dish sir would you like it flat like a pizza or rolled up like a calzone it's the same fucking food doesn't matter same shit so uh the, in the, the whole game because they have an 800 degree pizza oven uh-huh. at the end they throw it in there comes out a piping hot two minutes you know fresh pizza that's yeah. the whole gimmick and it's very thin crust very thin in the middle and then chewy yeah. on the outside it's like if you want to spend eight bucks and still feel hungry after your meal <laughs> basically i like blaze but it's like you need to eat like two of them at least to feel what i hate full. about that place is that they they do or, the, 800 degrees whatever they do the subway thing where they they are like, what do you want on it? And it's like, oh, I have all these choices. And then you find out later that it's a buck a piece. Like, yeah. you want olives on it? It's a dollar. And then all of a sudden, you're spending $40 on a little pizza. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the subway of, of pizza places. Would you like that type of experience? No, there? I'm so over that experience, man. Like, I just want... That's where everything's going, I feel like. Yeah, and, and, it, and like, with Chipotle, like, I, I wish they just had, like, a... Like a this, like four different items that are like this is the one that's the most common. Need? Do you know when you go up to like a soda machine, you push your cup, mm-hmm. and that's what you get? Yeah. All right. We need to take people out of the situation. You're like, let's have like a bowl restaurant where you go up, you push your bowl, and it just comes <laughs> out like white rice yeah. Yeah. or brown rice, uh-huh. and then you go next to your like your pork, and just have that sludge just come on out. <laughs> You yeah. know how successful that shit would be? Dude. People would be all over that. And it's like you pay, it's like, and you know, like, well, how much does it cost? You're like, 15 bucks. Flat. As much as you want of anything. Just 15 bucks. Well, I mean, like, this is the whole Jimmy John's model, is that there's only, like, a few different options. Oh, and there you like, go. Like, that's why they're able to be you so fast. You could pay five too. extra dollars to actually put your head underneath it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, because then we could just, or, or, like, maybe that's the thing. Like, forget bowls. When you're hungry, you just put your head underneath, and then it just shoots up in your <laughs> mouth. Well, I feel like in most scenarios, like there's usually there's usually like one or maybe two ingredients that you want like altered out of what the the norm usually is. So like if you go to like a Jimmy John's, right? Like I don't like tomatoes, so like I'll just order a sandwich and just be like, no tomatoes, please. And then that's that's and then it's, it's they start making it right there, and I I don't have to fucking interact with people that can't hear me or the, or they're like, what did you want? Or they or they they put in too much, and I'm like, oh, I don't want that. Like I don't want to observe that process. Yeah, I don't need to be part of this. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, if I go to a pizza place and, and and they're like, "What do you want on your pizza?" I'm like, "Fucking, I don't just make it a pizza." Like, God damn it, <laughs> number two, please. I'm gonna sit over here and be on my phone. Don't you have a weird beef with people who just get just cheese pizza? Yes, fucking, it pisses me off. It makes me so mad because it's basically just two ingredients away from just being bread 
or one ingredient away from being yeah. a, a grilled cheese sandwich, uh, just grilled cheese, yeah. essentially. Bread, uh, grilled cheese is just bread and cheese. Yeah. And then pizza is just one more ingredient. Oh, now you got sauce. Whoa. Holy shit. Fucking grow up. It's <laughs> Get some fucking toppings on there. Make it taste like something. Uh, I, love I think it getting... tastes like cheese and dough. And yeah. Pop, I, pizza sauce. I love getting just cheese pizza. Yeah, I don't man, know what you're best. talking about. Cheese pizzas for dildos. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> it, makes me, it makes me so fucking Dude, mad. Dude, I get so pissed off when I see people who get a pizza and then they, it comes back just laden with everything what and i'm like about? it's not a pizza anymore oh well, sorry you don't like ingredients <laughs> <laughs> i've been to fucking rome dude italian pizza has Jesus tons Christ, of shit on. yeah because that's i know Guys, what i'm talking I've about i've been to rome I, I think i know a little something I, about pizza i was at the rome airport <laughs> <laughs> i ate at a sabaro <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same shit, except in Rome, they put in fucking, they put potatoes on the pizza. They put like scallops, scallop potatoes on yeah. pizza. You know what I liked in Rome, actually? They, you know how you get, we usually get a slice in a shape of a triangle? Well, when I went to, I also went to Rome, and they cut it like on a slanted side, so you had these long strips, and you kind of ate it in strips, and oh, I'd never seen that. And I was that like, oh, delicious. these Romans really know what they're talking about. I mean, it's all about preparation, right? Like, would you would you eat a bowl of flour and water and uncooked meat and like unmelted cheese does that sound delicious to you because that's the same fucking thing as pizza and pasta <laughs> it's just about i mean at least it's a thing like the difference between mexican food and italian food is like with tortilla chips like right now i'm looking i have like snacks in the studio sometimes and I, right now i'm looking i have tortilla chips certainly don't cheese. have hummus I don't have hummus, but I have salsa, which is tomatoes, right? So what? what's the difference? What's the thing that makes this a different meal than Italian food? Well, first of all, the tortilla is fried, okay? So that's a different ingredient. You're introducing oil into your fucking bread. So at least that tastes different. Okay. With Italian food, they don't fry fucking anything. Well, lasagna's baked. Ziti's baked. Instead it's of- just heat. Heat. <laughs> 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 heat is not an ingredient. I'm going to, you know what? Disqualified. Heat is yeah. not an ingredient. Sorry. Well, I mean, if you cook pasta regularly, it's usually boiled. So it's they use water. But it doesn't change the it's not flavor. just heat. It's, it's boiled. I think cooked pasta tastes different than uncooked pasta. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Unco- oh, man. I was really hungry one time. I woke up. You and- fucking gross, <laughs> gross man. You, <laughs> you ate a good. bunch of uncooked pasta. Unco- well, it was uncooked ramen. And then I got super constipated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not that uncommon, is eating uncooked, uncooked ramen. Yeah. yeah. It was like my college days, and I was it like, I It takes like a minute oh. to cook in the microwave. I even. didn't have heat in my apartment, and so I was just like... Well, because heat's not an ingredient for a good apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time, um, this uh, Mormon mission... I used to live in, in Salt Lake City, about a block away from the Mormon temple. Yeah, wow. And How so, convenient. Yeah, and so it's walking I, distance, man. Yeah, oh man, go go to except you can't go there on Sundays. It's closed on Sundays. It's weird. Um, so anyway, this uh, these Mormon missionaries would come by my house sometimes, and they'd knock on my door. And one time, I w- I didn't even have a bed in my apartment. It was just like dark and cold. And I had one of those lamps from IKEA that have like the three bulbs, and I wouldn't replace any of the bulbs until all three of them had gone out. <laughs> so I just had like a little bit of dim light from my one my one last flickering light. And I came home and I fell asleep in on my bean bag. That's all I had. I didn't have anything else. And uh, <laughs> someone knocks at the door. You're in a competition for the world's saddest story. <laughs> so someone knocks at the door and I scramble to put on like like some some shorts or something. And my go one pair of shorts. Yeah. And it was like five thirty six at night. I'd came home from a long day at work or something. And I was like, I was exhausted and I'm bleary eyed. I open my eyes are bloodshot. And the guy looks inside my apartment. It's dark with a fully, one flickering light and nothing in there but a bean bag. And he, and the first thing he's a Mormon missionary. First thing out of his mouth is, "Are you happy with your life?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know I'm not. <laughs> just go, yeah, man, a I'm a fucking question. rock star. <laughs> Why are you being such an asshole? And then and then he goes, well, have you heard of the Mormon church? I'm like, yeah, you mean the thing I can see my from my fucking window? Yeah. Yes, man, I've heard of it. I heard of that thing I can see all the time. What, do you just start on your year-long service trip by the first house? Yeah. yeah. How, do, how the fuck did... That, that surprises me that there's missionaries that are walking around Salt Lake City, Utah. It surprises me, too. Like, have you heard of it? That's the only place where they, they walk around and then... Hey, how's it going? Like, ah, oh, so you heard of it. All right, all right, see ya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I heard that, actually, when the Mormons build a church that they do it, it's all cash. They don't borrow money to do it. Wow. Which I think really? is pretty baller. Yeah. Well, the Mormon church, Time Magazine had an article uh, 
about like five, six years ago called Mormon Inc. And they talked about how successful the Mormon church is just as a business. A business wow. Yeah, because they have a lot of real estate and they have all these different uh, businesses that they run, these these donation. It's called the Deseret Industries. And for everyone else, that's like a goodwill. And that's what uh, that's that's their like charity service type thing. But yeah, it's an interesting. Every Mormon I've, I've ever worked with or like have known has always been like the nicest, kindest most giving That's people. how they get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when we, we when we were touring, we did a, a show in Salt Lake City, Utah, which was a great show, by the way. Um, but w- we got to walk around the city during the day. And first of all, it was like a thousand degrees. And second of all, there was like a, like a fair going on. There, there was like food trucks and like activities and shit. Yeah. And everyone there was fit and beautiful yeah and coupled up and they had like wonderful dogs and shit and i was just like what is this world right now everybody says that about uh utah and salt lake city like how hot everyone is i never saw it i don't i don't know although all the chicks there well, are yeah you were living in your sad apartment <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what did you just say <laughs> all, the, all the chicks in utah are into anal because whoa wait what yeah because that's how they preserve their virginity and so they're like, no, no, I, you know, I want to save it for marriage. Put it in the butt. I'm yeah. like, that's, the, that's like the worst. <laughs> that's like, wow. it's like the raunchiest. You like, you're starting at level two. You know, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll do it. I'll do it because I'll take one for the team. Yeah, I'm not like DJ Khaled. <laughs> I, I've had to have that conversation with people before. Uh, where you don't or, want or I had an- to go. I had to, anal. <laughs> I just sit down with them and go, anal sex is sex, and they go, no, man, no. And I'm like, yes. You had to convince somebody that anal it, sex. It, it, I've it had has to, sex in the name. I, uh, I went to a Catholic university, and and I have had that conversation with people before. So if you, I mean, it's really simple to define. So if gay you, men have never had sex. They've yeah, they're all virgins. They're all virgins. <laughs> I mean, that's why I held on to my virginity for so long. I just had sex in the anus. Yeah, and the uh, it, it doesn't count in the in the. Uh, Which is very difficult because I'm not gay. Yeah. No, I of course not. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> but I do it, you know. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get it done. It honestly, it just hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> All right, dude. What do we decide here? All right, so anal, anal, or uh, Italian food is not anal sex. It, it's all the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So, Aaron, final word on the Italian uh, food controversy, I guess. Is it all the same shit or what not? What a dumb controversy. podcast debate. It's not a fucking dumb. <laughs> you're fucking dumb, Taylor. Here's the thing. I went to Florence. Okay, another fucking. It's a place in Italy. And oh, every- did you hear that, guys? <laughs> Florence is a place in Italy. Everyone's oh. like, everyone's like, oh man, you got to have the food in Florence. It's really fucking good. And you know what? They were right. It was really fucking good. But the thing I got in Florence, the best tasting thing I got was a, a green peppercorn steak. Steak you can't claim as part of your cultural cuisine. Every culture has a type of steak that doesn't count, except for Japanese. Wait, well, yeah, no, Japanese have steaks yeah, they too. Have they steak. have Kobe, yeah. Kobe beef, Kobe beef, and all yeah. that shit. Uh, yeah. So every culture has a steak. So what is Italian food? If you take away the chicken piccatas with your fucking uh, green capers uh-huh. and shit, yeah, right, right. And then what? What's that's you're just, already having caveats to it, though. If you if you rule out these other foods that we've described are different than what my point is. <laughs> then obviously <laughs> well why haven't you assholes mentioned fettuccine alfredo alfredo's a you know well, cream because base because you came cheese. down on pesto so hard that i thought it wasn't even worth it yeah. correct a good point yeah i did a really good job pesto is a lot farther off than alfredo I yeah that. Man, that'll, that they can take you out for a whole saturday oh, yeah yeah you know yeah, alfredo, oh, you have alfredo on a friday night oh, it is just and, and that's what i want to talk about you mentioned gnocchi earlier okay so i'd had gnocchi from like so many different places in, in, all around like, in, in rome America. Yeah. in florence well, so so i I hated it always, and I thought, you know what? I love maybe gnocchi. maybe I just haven't had the good kind. I haven't had the good stuff, right? Because right? like it's I've, the same way with Philly cheesesteak sandwiches; they're all bullshit. And everyone's like, "Oh, you, you haven't had a Fucking good one." Fucking a! So, so I went to Philly. I'm from Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's garbage food. And I went to the place that invented them. Well, one of the two, Pat's Geno's. Which one? Yeah, the one with the silver kitchen table whatever they they're assholes Did to they you. yell at you yeah yeah like oh you want philadelphia wanna... they all yell at you yeah yeah you want it with City of brotherly hate <laughs> yeah. yeah totally you want it with, with, with when when one of the ingredients comes out of a can and it's a cheese flavored product i don't think it's really like a, a, a thing that you have to fi- like worry about the cuisine it's a food of the people yeah so, so i so i finally i uh, in florence i'm like I, okay maybe i just haven't had good gnocchi and i went to this place this amazing restaurant i'm like i'm gonna get a bowl of gnocchi i'm gonna try it here and it still fucking sucks you eat one and you're full. You're done with it. Gnocchi's a garbage. You food. always make yourself seem like the most like, I'm going to sit down 
I'm going to have a bowl of gnocchi. I'm going to give it a shot because I'm here and I want to experience the culture. And then you take one bite and you're like, you fuckheads don't know what food is about. <laughs> Correct. It's annoying. I hate it so much. So I guess um, that's the debate, guys. Vote on Madcast. <laughs> yes, Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Aaron, thanks for coming on. Happy 100th episode. episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, that's madcastmedia.com. And the voicemail number is at the bottom of every page if you want to leave us voicemail. We've got a shit ton this week, especially for our 100th episode. But first, I want to talk about the results from the debate last week. Aaron, last week we debated, do nice guys finish last? No. No. <laughs> there you go. I, quick to the point. Right like on the gates. Yeah, it's good you didn't have me on that show, because that would have been a fucking 10-second episode. <laughs> well, tune in next week, guys. Uh, well, we put it to the test. Yeah. We, we asked the audience, do nice guys finish last? Right. And with 63% of the vote, no. Correct. You're right. Everyone agreed. Wow. Yeah. All right. We had this guy on, Eric Barker, who wrote this book, Barking Up the Wrong Tree, and he had a chapter about nice guys not finishing last. Was that so- intentional? I was. Name I've been meaning to ask name? him. Yeah, Eric Barker barking up the wrong tree. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, I don't know. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm barking up the wrong tree. All right, all right, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you've been waiting thirty years to make that joke. <laughs> oh man, I. I mean, if I had it, I would use it. Yeah, my last name's Babcock. It's awful. <laughs> There's... <laughs> Um, There's no good pun that comes with Babcock. <laughs> I'm Babcocking all over. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. You've been Babcocked. Oh, you know what? You uh, you can do Babcook. Ba- cooking with Babcock. Ba- <laughs> Babcooking with Babcock? Ba- uh, no, sometimes, they're all bad. Sometimes people have trouble remembering my name, so I put a nickel in my eye. Oh, gosh. Taylor. <laughs> What's your last name? Nikolai. <laughs> Taylor, go sit in the hallway, please. Um <laughs> Well, not it, on the chair, not on the chair, on the floor, on the floor. Um, <laughs> And then we asked the second part of the, the debate question yeah. was, does Ron Babcock oh, deserve yeah. a promotion? And with 58 percent of the vote, a little divided. Yes. Oh, oh, oh you really never oh, thought I was going to make yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Suck my Babcock. Wow. Well, but congratulations! We did get a bunch of voicemail about that. Oh no! I've got a ton of voicemail. I immediately I, regret everything I just yeah. said. Let's see. Let's hear some of this voicemail first, because I want to see what you guys think if he deserves this in the way that you think he does. Okay. Here's here's the first one. Maddox, I just went to the website. I voted yes for uh, Ron's promotion, but uh, I have a contingency on my yes vote, and that is that he gets promoted to a position that emphasizes the fact that he always brings the conversation off track, not on track to the debate. He is not a moderator. He should be promoted to the, uh, the tangent officer or the D moderator, <laughs> some other position like that. I'll call back if I uh, think of any better uh, titles than that, but I definitely think that that should be Ron's promotion. Yeah, there's that one, and then here's another person weighing in. Hey, Maddox. Um, so I have a uh, promotion suggestion for Ron, or maybe it's a demotion. I'm not sure. I'll let you decide. Um, but being that he doesn't seem to moderate the debate so much anymore, so seems to take things off track rather than putting them back <laughs> on track, I recommend you uh, promote him to demoderator or uh, maybe just like the chaos causer or, you know, the uh, the tangent guy. I don't know, but uh, but guy. I don't think calling him a moderator is the right thing to do because he's really not moderating. He's... Uh, Causing more chaos in the debate than he is. I thought I was uh, doing good at moderating. Wow. Well, anyways, love the show. Fuck Nazis. Yeah, fuck Nazis to you, too. And we got one last one. Listen to this one. Maddox, you idiot. Ron does not deserve a freaking promotion. Are you kidding me? He hasn't moderated anything. (laughs) Wow. Oh my god! You know, you're, you're and being... honestly, every time I'm like, "All right, man, try and keep it on track. <laughs> be a moderator." Like, that, that was me actually really trying to be a deputy moderator. I thought I was doing pretty I good. Did a good job. I mean, you know, you get promoted to a position with reduced pay, but that's cool. Yeah. Well, we do have it. We do have to. These are binding. If they vote, it it's a binding agreement. So I have to go wow. by what what the uh, audience decides. Truly so. democratic show. It is a very democratic show. And I have to go by it. So, Ron, you are getting a promotion today. Wow. His current role and title on the show is Deputy Cadet Moderator. And, Ron, I am proud to announce, pleased for the very first time, you're going from Deputy Cadet Moderator to 
first hand on staff tangent officer. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank Duncan. you. You know, it's a role that I was born to play. <laughs> yeah. First hand on staff tangent officer. I feel so much more capable in this role than deputy cadet moderator. Yeah, it's like you don't even have to, like, you're, you're already doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point, if you keep the conversation on track, you're actually doing a horrible job. You know, yeah. one time well, in second grade, I had a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of tangents, let's get to some voicemail. That's not even a tangent. That's just a shitty transition. Yeah. Didn't that's we just do voicemail, yeah, though? No, we, no that was voicemail voice about mail. Ron's Ron's uh, promotion. Oh, promotion. okay. But here's some, here's some actual voicemails about episode 100. Listen to this guy. Hey, Maddox. I just wanted to call in and congratulate you on your 100th episode. I can't believe it has been almost four years that I've been listening to you podcasting. And let me tell you what, it has been a wild ride. I've met a lot of awesome people through the community that surrounds the podcast, including a guest of the show, Mike Gams, who was on episodes 17, 46, and 66. You can check those out over at madcastmedia.com. Is this a robot? Anyway, something that's just crazy to think about is that I've been listening to you podcasting since before my first son was born, but I absolutely love the podcast, so... I'm really looking forward to another four years of President King, Professor Maddox, Punch hey. a Nazi. Thank you, Punch a Nazi to you too. Very nice, very Did nice. Did you go to a professional recording studio? Yeah. yeah, he sent me that. He he sent me a bunch of voicemails. It and he was sounded like, amazing. Yeah, he was like, I'm I'm sending these to you from my home studio. And I listened to them I'm like, well, I don't even know if people will believe this is a real thing because it sounds so good. Anyway, Is that speak- a phone? That was no, that was not on a phone. He did send the direct MP3. He actually came by the studio and recorded it here. Yeah. <laughs> so he didn't call in. That was a yeah. I'll count it. No. I, occasionally, people call in from Japan or China or whatever, and they say, "Hey, man, I don't want to pay long distance," so they'll send me an MP3 they recorded. So I'm like, oh, "All right, that's fine. I'll, okay. do, I'll do that." Um, here's another voicemail. Speaking of episode 100 and Mike Gams. Hey, Maddox, it's me, uh, Mike Gams again. I just wanted to say that if uh, anybody else calls in and leaves a voicemail and mentions. Uh, me or the fact that I was on episodes 17, 46, and 66, now available at madcastmedia.com. I uh, certainly did not pay them to do so, and they did so on their own volition. Anyways, congratulations on episode 100. Hey, Mike thank Tom. you, Mike Gams. I oh. do I do think he paid, <laughs> he paid that it's for It's a little it. suspicious. Yeah, when he has to go out of his way. We got another one from our own Super Arrogant Brothers. Listen to this. Hey there, it's Dr. Mitchard from Super Arrogant Bros. I just wanted to let you know, you know, happy birthday. Way to be 100 years old, you ancient fuck. I might be I might be mistaken. Okay. Dirk tells me I'm mistaken. Whatever. You're old. You're old. So super. Very, very nice. Very sweet. Sweet fan. Sweet voicemail. Is he kidnapping someone? Yeah. I don't know what's going on right now. I mean, with his fan base. Who's also a fan of Maddox. <laughs> hey, Thomas, says hi! You shut the fuck up! <laughs> I would be very, you know, you know, with this fan base, I would not be surprised. We had some voicemails as, with with someone who's, like, going through a Chick-fil-A order one time, and they, like, didn't call back to leave another voicemail. They just said, hang on, finish their order, and then came back to the voicemail. We've had a bunch, yeah, just um, real wow. cream of the crop. Here's one from our own Kirk Wilcox. Kirk Wilcox has been on the show, I think, twice. Uh, listen to this. What up, Maddox? Kirk Wilcox here. And I'm just wondering, how are you going to have a debate about whether or not nice guys finish last without having your boy Tucker Max on? You know, the guy that wrote the book, Assholes Finish First, (laughs) on to debate this topic. Way to drop the ball, idiot. (laughs) Anyway, fuck Wales, fuck Biggie. Fuck bad boy as a record label and as a motherfucking crew. And if you want to be done with Wales, then fuck you too. Wow. Kirk Wilcox coming out the gates. Wow. Fiery strong. Yeah, I haven't, uh, we got to have Tucker Max on this show, which I think I will at some point. Are you familiar with Tucker Max, Aaron? He's the guy who writes the books about his, like, escapades with, with women, right? Basically. He's written three books, and he's no longer doing that. He started his own company. It's like a book and a boxing. Yeah, book in a box. It's uh, it's, it's really a blown book up. in a box. <laughs> it's a, what? Well, I don't know. What is it? Uh, it's they write books for you. So if you are 
Uh, if you have an idea for a book and you don't have the time, if you're a very busy person, you have basically, I think, a 12 or 14 hour interview with these people and they ask you all the questions and get a feel for you and your personality. And then they'll write a, a, a draft of the book and it's, you know, from start to finish. And a lot of uh, very busy people, entrepreneurs and people like that. Wow, I'm doing a real good pitch. I'm going to cut wait, this from the episode. Fucking, wait, but that's <laughs> all I get paid. But then you didn't really write the book. Well, it's most ghostwritten. people have ghostwriters. Yeah, yeah. a lot of Maddox people. doesn't, yeah. and that's why his books take a little bit of time because they're actually from his brain. Yeah. Ah, shit! I don't know anything about the book publishing industry. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, here's a big secret: most most authors are dead. Uh, they're and they keep churning out books because they because they don't let their fans know that they've died. So the publisher will just like keep churning out. Who's books like under- the most famous one? Uh, Dean Brown. Koontz. They're all- For a while, I've thought Stephen King. There's just no way he can put out that amount of content. They're all sci-fi and like romance authors who have like longtime fan bases, and they've yeah. died, and they don't want to tell their fans, and they just like keep churning them out, and they keep using the same name. Wow. Nobody knows. Wow. Yeah. A lot of them are dead. Stephen um, King, though, I don't know if you've read his book on writing, but that dude, he, I, I believe that he writes the books because the the way his brain works is just like, yeah. yeah is it guy. just a lot of cocaine? Like, well, it was for sure. I, I mean, like, I'm not trying to make fun of uh, addiction or anything, but like, I, like, I know he has. Especially been, now like, when it's so productive, <laughs> it's just it's just his rhythm. Like he he the the way he writes is he just starts writing. He, he'll come up with like like a hook basically and just be like, this book is about a dude who ends up being whatever, and then he'll start he'll just start writing and he just won't stop until he's like out of juice, and then he puts it away for six months, and then he'll just start something else, and then like after after six months he like goes back and reads the draft, and then he like punches it up and cleans it up and makes it not sound like the ramblings of a lunatic and then he just replaces that book it's a great way to write actually and and i think the simpsons had a joke where Sim- stephen king was falling off a cliff and uh, he pu- pulls out his typewriter and goes oh let me write one quick last novel and he writes it before he lands. <laughs> yeah like that guy just oh man he's so prolific um so a couple couple of weeks ago, Aaron, I snuck into a secret party that turned out to be a weed party at a dispensary. Okay. And I had to smoke my first joint ever. Ooh, scandalous. Yeah. And so we have that this- That sounds like a great environment to smoke your first joint in. Oh, I was a pro. I there were a lot of really cool black people there. <laughs> yeah. Well, right on. There were, yeah. And so I had this, this we have this longtime caller called Weird Matthew McConaughey. I think you'll know why when you hear him. Uh, but he called in. And, uh, you know, says uh, if he saw me at a party, he'd be suspicious. Mm-hmm. Maddox, you do have a very cop look to you. Like, if I didn't know you and you showed up at a party and you were, like, turning down drugs, I'd be like, I don't know, because I always heard that if you can picture the person in a cop uniform, <laughs> you just look too neat. Like, I could see you in blues with the fucking cap on, beating up on some minorities. <laughs> Beating yourself up, beating <laughs> off in your cop car. That's probably what you're doing. <laughs> oh, yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, that's the average uh, weird Matthew McConaughey phone call. Usually it ends with his dog barking or a squeaky door. Uh, <laughs> you, just, you should just call that guy like 1% battery life or something. It just sounds like he's running out of batteries. <laughs> well, I usually get those calls at 3 or 4 in the morning, and uh, they're they're always hilarious. And I sometimes we have these long conversations, and they get surprisingly intellectual. We talk about like like the oil industry and uh, you know whether or not oil companies are doing the right thing for them it's like it's really heady stuff like right. three four in the morning um anyway here's a speaking of heady here's another caller from our favorite uh, bad ombre talking about a certain contest uh, congratulations on the 100 episodes cabrones uh hopefully in the next 100 you'll actually get to send out that fucking t-shirt to australia yeah, so a uh, long time ago, literally, I think over a year ago, year and a half, maybe, someone won a free T-shirt on the show, oh. and he may or may not have received it yet. Uh, and it, full disclosure, it was not my contest. Uh, I got pimped into giving away a free T-shirt. Oh, shit. So I got to send this guy. That's you know. happened to me a couple of times. You, you too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to send your fans T-shirts? No, just like friends that are like, oh, I know these guys have it, and it's like... Yeah. um. It's like I can't publicly be like we're not going to do this. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, all right, here, here's some t-shirts, I guess. It's better to say that you will publicly and then disappoint privately. Yeah. <laughs> I so, love, yeah. I mean, can I have a t-shirt? Or are you going to be a dick about it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, there it is. Aaron said publicly that cool. he's going to All right, a awesome. I know it's coming. I um, know he's going to follow through. Here's a here's a, here's another voicemail, a very familiar voice, I think. Listen to this. <clears throat> uh Hi, Maddox. I, I just wanted to let you know for your 100th episode that 
I'm I'm a big fan. Um, I love you. Okay, Taylor. <laughs> the fuck are you? Do- you know what, Taylor? Douchebag of the week. The douchebag of the week. I wanted to call to see if it was real. Yeah, it's <laughs> a fucking real phone number. Of course it's real. I play voicemails every week. Did you just panic? <laughs> uh, I, 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 um, man, uh, I love you. This isn't Taylor. <laughs> this isn't Taylor. <laughs> it's gonna, how I'm going to hang up every phone call. <laughs> Not Taylor. Well, you're douchebag of the week. Congrats. Uh, here's one. I talked about um, the types of spiders I like or humble spiders, and, oh. and uh, this guy's calling me out on that. <sighs> Maddox, Maddox, Maddox. You like humble spiders, but like when people anthropomorphize dogs saying they smile or, you know, those squids or octopus that people rescue and they think they say thank you to them, then it's like, oh, these animals are stupid. They don't know anything. But you think a spider can be humble? Really? Uh, fuck whales. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fuck whales to you too, but definitely, look, spiders, there's there's humble spiders. They're the ones that stop when you put your foot down in front of them. Yeah. The idiots are the ones that get squished because they keep marching towards you. Is that you projecting them being humble? Maybe they're just being like uh, self-preservation. Well, what is... Okay. So if humility humility is not the motive, it's just self-preservation, isn't that that the same thing? Humility and self-preservation in that sense? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to like not charge into a lava, uh, into molten lava? You could say it's, oh, self-preservation, but it's also humility. You know the lava's stronger than you. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, lava. That, that's, that's I bow petty. to your power. I also, I also love that dude because he's he's just very like, man, fuck you, Maddox. And then he says your tagline. Yeah, like, it's like, <laughs> like if you were like criticizing Hitler, like, dude, you suck. Like, fuck your whole regime and everything. Hail Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, uh, speaking of uh, dictators, or I guess uh, evil evil men, mm-hmm. it was Osama bin Laden Death Day, the holiday that I created wow. this last week. And just before the show, I had a, I got off the phone with PayPal because I made a payment uh, to somebody who helped me make that video. It's really funny. And the payment was put on hold, and I may be on a terrorist watch list because I put in the description, for the Osama bin Laden Death Day. And I, I've gone through PayPal twice with their compliance department, explaining to them multiple times. For the love of God, it's not a terrorist video. I sent them a link. I said it's just a stupid little animation. Anyway, here is a uh, here's a song from it, made by a big fan and longtime listener, Surreal Maddox, because I go by Real Maddox online. Listen to this. Sometimes when I'm feeling down, I think of Osama bin Laden being dead. Nothing fills my heart full of joy. As quickly as the thought of Osama Bin Laden being dead Osama is dead Osama is dead It fills my spirit with cheer Osama is dead Osama is dead He's no longer here I'm so happy that Osama Bin Laden is dead Osama bin Laden is dead. It's time you were too. Hey, there it is. Wow. Very touching. Yeah. Most nice of the voice. Most yeah, she's great voice. Great use of the slide whistle. Oh yeah, that was uh oh man, I used the animated track, so it has like bombs dropping. Uh, <laughs> that's what that is, yeah. yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Um I just like that that's what PayPal came down on you. Like for all the times that I've like done business transactions where I'm like, yeah, friends and family, sure. Like, and then, and it's like you mentioned Osama bin Laden. We are putting your account on hold. Yeah, I think PayPal should would be like concerned there. They're like, guys, ninety nine percent of our transactions are just through friends and family. So weird. Hmm. Hmm. No weird. services no at service all. Charge. Yeah, I thought for sure people would be using it, but well, whatever. Well, they, yeah. Everybody's nope. friends, I guess. Well, at least you guys aren't on a terrorist watch list. Listen to this one. Hey, I haven't listened to the show in a long time, and, like, Rucka's gone now? What the fuck? But anyway, I just wanted to say that this Taylor chick sounds pretty hot, so that's a good uh, exchange for Rucka. Good job. Fuck Nazis. <laughs> Say that oh, the Taylor man. chick's hot, and he calls back because he, uh, he watched the YouTube video. Listen to this. Hey, so I just checked and saw that you guys had a YouTube channel, and I saw that Taylor was actually a dude. Um... <laughs> He's pretty hot, so I'm going to stick to what I said originally. Wow. Fuck whales. All right. Hey, there it is, dude. You're still a hot dude. 
How about that? Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, guys, you can watch us on YouTube as, as well. It's uh, just search for search for Madcast Media on YouTube, and you can check that out. Every week we put up a video episode in addition to the podcast. You're welcome. Work my fucking ass off <laughs> editing. It's like three hours of content I produce every week, and and people have the audacity. Aaron, in the last fucking. Six months, I've I've come a, I come out with a new fucking book, yeah. right? That I've been working my ass off on. I've been doing a live news show mm-hmm. on Fridays. I produce this this YouTube yeah. channel. You keep yelling at our guest. Be- <laughs> Go ahead. Literally has said nothing. You're the one who worked yourself up to this yeah. level. I'm so mad, and everyone like has the audacity to say, hey, "Maddox, how come you're not producing more?" Content? Literally everyone. Yeah, yeah, everyone. I get shit all the time. Even yeah. my mom. Oh really? Oh my gosh! My mom sent me the funniest text after she listened to the uh, the episode. Where Your I mom listens. The, yeah. The episodes? Yeah, I didn't think so, but I guess she does. And she sent me. She said, "Maddox, did you go to a party with black people and smoke?" <laughs> <laughs> and smoke. <laughs> yeah. And then I did said, "Did you make sure to wear a gas mask?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said yes, and she didn't re- reply. And then the next text I get from her, she goes. I feel bad for Bill Cosby. And I said, Mom, oh, Jesus he's a rapist. <laughs> he's a convicted, he's convicted now. There's nothing to feel bad of, bad for. Anyway, that's my mom. Big fan of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and man, <laughs> speaking of fuck ups, here's one last voicemail. Uh. Hey, Maddox. The Ryan here. I just want to give you a call out. Oh, fuck. Good God damn it. <laughs> yeah, he called back with the correct voicemail, but I'm not gonna play that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, goddamn it, shit! Hundredth uh, episode. See, man, that's why you gotta. That's why you just gotta not read the comments. That's yeah. that's the that's the number one rule. Do you read the you you uh you ever dive deep into the comments or you? I mean, I used to, yeah. But now, like, no comments at all. Yeah, man, I'm a happier person. I wake up excited for the day. Yeah. I, I love all the people in my life much more. Yeah. I just do the work, get it done, and have fun with it. How many people think you're a chick? Th- they think I'm a chick? Yeah. A- actually, <laughs> it's funny you ask that because there are many people that do think I'm a what? chick. Why? Yeah. Well, because I, I'm, I am a very feminine personality, um, and I exude that a lot on the show. You know, I always pick women in video games. I'm I'm very I'm I'm a very like feminist minded individual and I say a lot of things about equality and, and that like oh I I I love women and all this stuff and everyone's like I think he's like closet trans. <laughs> he, <laughs> like he really wants That's to transition. That's the only thing that could explain it. Yeah. He's the only he wants to transition, but he, he's he's in the closet, he doesn't realize it. So there's like a the small community Goatee of people. Goatee is a prison that he wants to break out of. <laughs> yeah. There's a small community of people that like call me her and she and her like and like really want to help me like come out and yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, so it's Hey, that dude's for equality is a chick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Just try painting one fingernail and see how it feels. Oh, I used to all the time. My my, my ring finger. Oh, Oh, did you really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's something to do. <laughs> red, red, red. <laughs> I, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get yeah. it. No, 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 yeah, twenty no. percent from one fifth. Uh, anyway, hey, we should get some quick news headlines with our junior journalist Taylor Nikolai. Taylor, what do you got for us? Junior. A man was mauled to death by a bear after he reportedly tried to take a selfie with the creature. I heard about this. <laughs> after stopping to go to the toilet on his way home from a wedding, Prabhu Bhattera is said to have spotted the injured animal in India. People around him advised him against taking a picture with the creature. Uh, India has the highest rate of deaths linked to selfies for the two years between March 2014 and September 2016. Jesus. <laughs> it's such an idiot thing. So Rob, Rob uh, from Cyanide and Happiness, yeah. I don't know if you, do you remember this a uh, couple years back? He got in trouble. He was on the, he was like the front page of a newspaper because he tried to take a selfie with a bear and every, like this newspaper was calling him an idiot and it was reckless and this and that. He was like, he posted it on Facebook and was like, hey guys, look, I made it. I, I'm on the front page of this newspaper. This is a small town. And, it, you know, it was a picture of him with a bear. So now this headline happened. This guy got killed. And yeah. everybody's sharing it on his wall now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a dumb thing. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's it's a, a thing that's made to kill you. Yeah. Are we really going to, like, as a, it, we, from a species, from that lens, yeah. like, I mean, we we really going to miss the people? No, I don't who, feel uh, bad the guy at all. Like, <laughs> at all. Like the Darwin Award still kind of like thinning the herd a little bit. You oh, know? Yeah, I think people they have this problem in national parks as people keep doing this. They keep oh, getting okay. close to like animals trying yeah. to get photos, and you have park rangers who are like, "You guys gotta fucking 
Stop. Yeah. Stop turning your back and standing still against a deadly creature. <laughs> that would be really there, there's helpful. There's video of it, too, and it's really? dark. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, I, I'm not trying to make jokes about it at this point because the guy is, is dead, Um, and, and I can say whatever I want, like, he deserved it, quote unquote, but, like, you know, at a certain point, it's not funny. Um, He, like... It, it's, it looks like the bear tries to grab the phone from him, and he, like, it's like... Dude, is that the new iPhone, eh? <laughs> and it, Delete that now. <laughs> like, I, I, again, I'm not trying to make fun of this guy because he's dead, but it looks like he tries to pull the phone back away from the bear oh instead of just being like, this is game over. Like, I, I should, like, get away from this thing. And I said, just let the bear have the phone. I love that this happened, too, in, in India, where uh, it sounds like it's a significant enough occurrence that it's a fairly high enough percentage it's like yeah it's a you know it's like one of the top deaths in india is like selfies with bears is that what it was they're like the number related? one country in the world with with the highest rate of deaths due to selfies it's like that girl like uh she took it was taking a selfie on a bridge up in california there's like some famous bridge up there like on the coast and it's really beautiful and then she fell off the bridge oh, and she's taking a selfie she lived and uh, I think she got the picture. Well, you know what I hate is the people... <laughs> picture in <laughs> more people... ways than one. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, depends. How many likes did she get, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I want to know. How many likes did they get? Oh. oh. I guess he didn't have time to oh. post it. Wait, if he died... Yeah, how'd he post it? Did he post it? Someone else took a video so of So someone who knows him... So did he get the photo, was nearby. <laughs> it wasn't like, hey, maybe don't take the selfie with the bear. Yeah, and they, they, they recovered his belongings, and they were like, well, we should post this video <laughs> dude this video rules oh my gosh this selfie's awesome well, have you seen the picture of the, the videos of the guys who posted his account i'm not gonna be a dick yeah. <laughs> i'll give him credit he gets uh, have you seen the, the videos where the guys hang off the sides of buildings yes. and then eventually like the, the eventuality is a guy fell to his death of course. it's like i i at a certain point, you can't feel bad for people when they die from the deadly thing. Like, that's that's the interesting aspect of the content is, whoa, you could die. And it like, well, he died. And it's like, well, that's the interesting aspect of the content. They were chose, they made the choice to go for it and they did it. So like, at what point am I allowed to stop feeling like, I feel bad that it happened, but it's like, if you made the choice... It was under your own volition. Oh yeah, you know, like, well, like I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah it was I a stupid with it. move. It's, it's, it's like, like a weird, like, how am I supposed to digest this content? Like, oh, well, it, like, oh gosh, this tragedy that could have been totally avoided by that person. Yes, yeah. I would. Like, they people, made the choice to do it. Oh, I would yeah. prefer if people don't put themselves into risky situations where they could die by making the content. And actually, uh, this is why one of the reasons why I think pranks, for the most part, should be banned from YouTube because there's too many cases where, like, so there's fucked up pranks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Schools in the United Kingdom are beginning to remove analog clocks from the classroom because students are complaining that they can't read them. What? Finally, Offici England people get to be stupid for once. Yeah. Officials have begun replacing the traditional clocks with digital ones as children have been un unable to tell the correct time on analog clocks, the Telegraph reports. This, so, I mean, it's, it's in a school. You think, like, lesson number one would be yeah. like, well, so here's a clock and this is how it works. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should just take 10 minutes and go over clocks. Yeah. What what are minutes? How you... <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Yeah, how how do you how do you get, get kids so fucking dumb? Although this lends itself to one of those outraged think pieces like millennials are so dumb these days, the kids today. I mean, I will say this digital it, it's it's a more efficient way of telling time. It truly is, yeah. I mean, you don't have to like do a little because we all do that thing where like we're the fucking is it okay, it's 4:32. Well, it's like I've... writing cursive. It's like who writes cursive now? Yeah. Why teach it? What? Why waste the time teaching something? And it like, I, I well, don't know. but it, you, you should still. Constitution, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried reading the Constitution? Yeah, it it's is garbage. So <laughs> it is legitimately really hard to read. That. Yeah, I'm like, how much did parchment cost back then? They could have like double spaced it a little bit, spread it out over a few more pages. Very it exciting. constantly blows my mind that like, if you messed up, you had to start all over. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I guess I totally agree with that. That thing though like they should be replacing analog clocks with digital clocks I, I mean you know it sucks that kids can't read them anymore but like it is the, a sign of the times right like an analog clock is when what situation are you going to be in where you can't possibly get a digital clock i'm assuming uh, they're very greyhound, cheap at this point the greyhound bus station your phone's dead right they're only gonna have analog clocks there forever. right but i mean forever but you say that but who knows they might change it eventually I mean, it's it's ugly. Did you ever see Benjamin Button? Oh. What? <laughs> they, at the end, they changed the analog oh, clock can... on the train station to. 
Oh, really? To real cl- the mystery pooper at a New Jersey <laughs> high school's track turned out to be the superintendent, yeah. cops say. The Kenilworth superintendent charged Monday with defecating in public was caught in the act at a Holmdale High School football field at, uh, and track after surveillance was set up due to human feces being found, quote, on a daily basis, police said. Huh. On a daily basis. This guy, every day, is going out on the football field, taking a big uh, Maybe his defense is going to be like, hey, listen, that one time was me. I had to go real bad but the other times wasn't me yeah <laughs> yeah he so, could. you can't prove those other ones were me <laughs> i just you know i just figured i was protected by the fact that there was someone else doing it so it would put the blame on it i really had to it. shit i'm not proud of it but i did do that one time of, of all the things we have that are crimes today like is this does this still need to be a crime like he took a shit on a football field first of all hilarious yeah second oh, yeah. he had to go who cares fucking g- no you- because the football field there's restrooms close by this was a this was a deliberate uh, attack deliberate <laughs> shit wrong no, no. if you are in the middle of a football field the closest restroom is at least 50 yards away yeah that's not that far is it and am, am i right with my man okay. 50, 50 if, i'm gonna need to know like the consistency of the shit was it a splatter gun situation <laughs> <laughs> it <was> solid. <laughs> click was, click boom <laughs> it was solid so, he could have went the 50 yard my biggest question was was he carrying around toilet paper every day too when he oh. would go on his runs he's got like, a shitty butthole after that oh that, man <laughs> or maybe he's just one of those guys with the strong sphincter muscle where you yeah. just close it off yeah, close it, you pinch it off and you do a safety wipe but you're good you know I, I or did he sometimes. rub his ass on the turf yeah. oh yeah that's I, how that's how the I mean, look, did that, that sounds kind of satisfying. Find this guy the same fine that you would find a dog owner for not picking up their shit. Which, by the way, everyone's like, oh, I'm, I'm a good dog owner. I pick up the dog shit. But your dogs have diarrhea. I see that shit. Your, your dogs have diarrhea, and there's nothing you can do about it. You should bring a sponge with you, too. Bring a sponge and then, like, you know. The diarrhea sponge. Yeah, the diarrhea it's sponge. It's Petco. That's all I ask. Have you ever stepped in dog poop? Yes, it's a it's a weak ruiner. It is yeah. the worst. It's awful. I, I'm curious, has have any of you shit in the outdoors, just on the ground? Yeah, I I had to once because I was locked out of my house, and I <laughs> I I looked around for something to wipe my ass with, and there, it was like where where did you do it? Like in the flower bed? By a quince tree. We had a quince. You know what quince are? No, it's no. A, it's like no, a very no tart, one does. It's like a very tart apple, and it was by the quince tree, and it was well, fall. yeah, because people are always shitting on them. Yeah, well. <laughs> Good it, fertilizer. It was it was around fall. I remember because because I reached to grab some leaves and they were all dry, cr- like crickly leaves. <laughs> and so I try I tried the leaves and they just like shattered all over my asshole. Oh, no. just, my ass and my hand was covered with like broken shards of dry leaves, and it felt terrible. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I ever shit outdoors. Oh man, really? That, but I love peeing off of high places. Yes. Oh, that's fun. Oh, dude, the yeah. best, man. I, when I was, uh, I went to summer camp. I remember we like would climb up on the cabins and pee off of it, and I never felt so alive. My As dad, a kid, like if you ever could pee off the Grand Canyon, it is just yeah. the fucking best. <laughs> oh, my dad man. did that. He, he, that's he, great. He walked out to this really, really narrow, thin ledge and put his life at risk so he could pee off of it. And my mom was screaming Way at him. Way better than a selfie with a bear. There you yeah. Go. Peeing off a ledge. And that's, that's a life experience. Oh my gosh, dude. You want to pee off the tallest thing you possibly can. We were we were on tour in a in a bus in Minnesota and it was the middle of nowhere and it was like two AM, so everything was closed. We were just surrounded by apartment buildings. And I really had to shit and you can't shit on a tour bus. So I was like, okay, I so I brought some toilet paper outside and we were in a parking lot. So I went into a corner, like a shadowy corner, and I was like, Nobody's gonna fucking find me here. It's like two or three AM. I'm just gonna take a shit and, and be done with it. So I, I, I squat down, I start shitting, and immediately a car just like <gasps> just comes up into the parking <laughs> lot. And then I'm just like, You gotta be fucking kidding me. So I'm just like, Oh god, oh god, oh god. It's like it's trying to get my pants up and like wipe my ass like as quick as I can and then and then he parks like there's a car between me and where he parks and I'm like oh my god I I swear to god if you saw me shitting so I just like pulled up my pants and just and just stood up and started casually walking as much as I could and I realized he wasn't getting out of his car because he was scared of me because I just look like some fucking vagabond <laughs> that just came out of the shadows. Yeah. Just like circling his car. And I was like, oh my God, this poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> now I feel bad for him. With your shitty ass. Did you wipe? Did you- yeah, yeah. I, I mean, as okay. quick as I could. Yeah. And then you went I don't back know on the tour a... bus, and yeah. everyone was like, "Hey, what were you doing over there?" No, everyone was asleep. Fuck that. <laughs> Although, if somebody was, I would have been like, "You would not believe what the fuck just happened to me." I am not shy about about poop stories. So we all like the idea of peeing from high places, but there's not really a safe place to do it in a controlled environment. I, I'm just spitballing right now. Like, why isn't there a business that gives you that opportunity mm. to do that? I tell you what. First, we do is we open up like a little snack store. 
next to like a Grand Canyon with the whole yeah. um, you know, thing where you put your head under it, you push it in and you know, shit comes out of it. Yeah. Food, right? Yeah. But the bathrooms are actually you're just gonna open the door out to a cliff. Oh my you're god. You're just gonna go outside. Genius. Yeah. I mean, there's a level of I'm serious right now. Like, why isn't there a a, a, a place where they can strap you in and it's completely safe and you can pee off a you know, be great place. is if you could also like kind of shit into some sort of like ski ball shooting device that then like when you flush it just fires your shit out into the canyon. Oh, that's so fucking cool! Yeah, let's do How it. fun would that be? Holy shit! And there, you can hit a target. You get a free ah! another free shit if you hit the target. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> a Kansas man attempting to to insert his penis into the tailpipe of a car had had to be subdued with a stun gun after refusing to listen to police. The suspect did not respond to offers to come. Off Officer commands and officers used a stun gun to subdue him. The Newton, Kansas. Rep- Did he get stuck? No. No, but. he just refused to. So they were like, dude, faster, faster, louder. And he just wasn't doing it. So they were like, fuck this guy. <laughs> he was intoxicated to the point of being incoherent, reports uh, the Chicago CBS. Huh. This guy was inco- incoherently to- intoxicated, huh? <laughs> the guy fucking a tailpipe. These guys. Every now and then they'll make a headline. And yeah, like I want to know: was he just was he just drunk, or was he one of the fucking like dude that loves cars? Yeah, it sounds like he was just drunk. Oh, okay, which is almost more weird. So I gotta find a hole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't even care. I don't care. Yeah, these car fuckers. I remember it was one of my one, <laughs> one of my favorite porns. This guy like dressed. Uh, he's wearing a bra, and his dick is in the tailpipe of a car. And I'm looking at this guy, and I'm like, "What are you doing, man?" Yeah, that is two very specific things together. Yeah, like I don't. I mean, How that's already really across, specific. How'd you come across this video? It was just a, a picture. I can send it to you. I, I still have it somewhere. Uh, and why did you it. save it? I, I send it to people. You know, yeah, that's cool. Hilarious. Yeah. Happy birthday. Send it to my other car files. Yeah. Yeah. I I save. I saw. I started saving weird porn to send to people. Yeah. And what the first one of the first ones ever was this guy who looked exactly like me. It was like a cartoon. <laughs> Of just a dude sitting on a couch with a big old boner, and ex- except it was in his boxers, so it wasn't even like remotely erotic. But I would just send it to people every now and then to, and be like, "Gross, what are you doing? Why did you, why did you do that?" I'm like, "Yeah, just you know, want to get a reaction out of you." That's that is like, I mean, this is terrible, but like, you you when you're a teenager and you have like a crush on some girl, and then you're browsing porn and you find a porn actress that looks just like that girl. Yes, and it's like I am gonna watch this for years to come. This is like my favorite porn right now. Ding ding ding. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, you found that girl who looks like yeah, the porn star who looks like your high school crush. Oh my gosh. Britain's Natural History Museum has disqualified a photograph from the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition after concluding that the image of an anteater involved a taxidermy specimen. Yeah, I heard about this. <laughs> the photograph taken in Brazil's Emma's National Park won animals in their environment category in 2017. The museum says it had been contacted by an anonymous source who questioned the image authenticity. Wow. Experts compared the image to high-resolution pictures of a taxidermy anteater on display at one of the entrances to the Emma's National Park. Wow. Who cares? Some, yeah, that was kind of my point. It's like there's some dude coming in the exhibit, and he's like, uh-uh, 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 no, no. Excuse me, curator? Um, Come over here, please. Such a beautiful photograph, is it? isn't it? Yeah. If it was real, baby. <laughs> like this guy deserves it more. If anything, he did. He went through the effort to get a fucking taxidermied yeah. anteater. Uh, the, uh, First a of all, regular... he, he was driving into the park to get a great photo. Yeah. Saw the taxidermy anteater. Was like, <laughs> oh, daddy's got an idea. <laughs> and then he went, and I saw the photo. It's a fucking awesome photo. Yeah. yeah. And, and and like the the they want to reward chance and luck. Like some dipshit comes along, an anteater who actually died in the moment, and there's like a whatever garbage on it. It's like, oh, that he deserves an award because he chanced into like, this. Like, if the anteater was like holding a margarita and had like a Jimmy Buffett hat on, I'd be like, okay, that's not really real. <laughs> but they had it in a pose of like going with the anteater yeah. stuff. It was all I mean, real to me. You're saying chance, but like that's what good natural wildlife photographers do. They'll sit in the same place for a decade yeah. waiting for the that chance so moment. So it's not even chance. You no. just you. That's what a good photographer is. Well, you that it's you are someone, rewarding you, it, a lazy idiot who's just sitting there. You're rewarding <laughs> suffering. That's all it is. You're, you're, you're rewarding patience. Patience. That's all. Do it's you hate patience? patience yeah, work. but when you show both pictures, I'm like, man, they both look good to me. You know, like I don't know the difference. I also love that the category was like very specifically like not taxidermy animals. <laughs> 
Medical researchers have developed a new tool that can help predict a patient's life expectancy, according to the Stanford Medicine. The predictive algorithm analyzes data uh, uh, from thousands of medical records. The algorithm determines which patients are likely to die between 3 and 12 months. In early testing, researchers used data from deceased patients, and the algorithm correctly predicted the remaining life expectancy 9 out of 10 times. Huh. Whoa. Fucking A. Don't want that. Don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Was that like in every every fictional story where like they meet death or whatever? Like, I know where you're going. I don't want to know. Fuck that. Plus, every doctor is like, it would you- surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do want to know it. <laughs> All I'm going to say is make the phone calls now. You have 30 minutes. It's it's hard enough for doctors to get it. It's like you have eleven months. No one will ever outlast this beyond eleven months. And then you always hear like, oh, they lived on for two fucking years. Doctors barely get it right. How's this fucking app? Like you're gonna feel depressed for like the next six months. Your supposed last six months of your life depressed because some fucking app told you you're gonna die. Well, yeah, Fuck you. I, I don't know, man. Until they get Siri to like not fuck up. Until they get Siri to not. Uh, think you're saying YouTube bread. <laughs> like, I'm not going to trust them telling me when I'm going to die. So yeah. I, my question would be, do you think that there's a case to sue if the prediction was wrong? Well, they cover themselves with that 9 out of 10 thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. So they leave a window. And, and besides, even if you, like, what are you going to sue for? Because like, you didn't die? Like, what, <laughs> That's what, what I'm asking. Um, <laughs> uh, I spent all my savings, so well, now I hold you've you got responsible. To think if, a, if an app or whatever this is uh, says you have three months to live, you're going to live like you have three months. Yeah. Well, oh, pre- I see what you're saying. Oh. Presumably, there's also some terms and conditions that you have to agree to when yeah. you like open up the app. I still think that probably someone will sue, though. Yeah. Well, we should wrap it up there. Aaron, thank you so much for coming on the show. Amazing time amazing guest long time coming would love to have you back if you're if you're ever up yeah, for maybe it. we could all go out to eat italian food yeah there you go yeah we can all order the same thing you yeah know, italian food singular not plural uh <laughs> and aaron where can people find you what is there anything you'd like to plug in particular you, you uh, got the new youtube bread series it's amazing yeah oh thank you um i don't know twitter i'm eager raptor on twitter yeah game grumps on youtube Fantastic stuff. We'll link to it. Thank you again for coming on the show, our big 100th episode. Thank you to our junior journalist, Taylor Nikolai. Someday you'll get that senior. Yeah. He voted (laughs) against me. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you to our first hand on staff, Tangent Officer, Ron Babcock. I just want to tell a quick story before we wrap up. (laughs) But most of all, you're welcome. Matt, uh, ben Franklin did not invent the light switch. Uh, but you know what he did invent? The catheter. Dumbass. Okay, the, like I said, the uh, the shitty fans who correct me on one minor thing I got wrong. Well, here's another one. <sighs> this is a weekly occurrence now. <laughs> ben Franklin did not invent the light switch. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get educated. <laughs> Like he takes time out of his day. <sighs> Minor correction. You know, I, I'm just gonna call him. I'm just. This is gonna ruin me all day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think he did invent the light switch. Yeah, and by the way, that was a joke, idiots. We know what he fucking invented. It was electricity. <laughs> oh, 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 oh shit! Can't wait for the fucking shitty voicemails that next week, you assholes. <laughs> all right, that's it. <laughs> Happy one <What> hundredth. <laughs> hey there. Don't forget to subscribe to Madcast Shows on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Okay, bye. Madcast Media Network.